Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Welcome. Hallelujah. Welcome. Welcome, everybody. We're just waiting for people to jump on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. If you're watching and you can hear me, please put your comments in. Say hi to me so I can know that you are watching with me, that you've entered into my room, my, my room with the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just comment if you can hear me. Comment if you're in the room, if you're in this live, just say hi. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come in, come in. The Lord is waiting. The Lord is waiting this evening for us to sit at his table. So come in and enjoy his presence tonight. Hallelujah. Just place a comment. Hi, Kian. Thank you for watching. You've helped me so much uh, to help Richard go live tonight. Hallelujah. No load shedding. Hallelujah. We finally get to do this. Praise the Lord. Kian, just confirm that everything is okay. Just let me know if the sound is good. If the music is too loud, please let me know, because we want a holy atmosphere tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're waiting for more people to jump on. Yes, let me know where you're watching far from. If you just joined the live. Hallelujah. Just say hi to me in the comments. I would love to just say hi to you, greet you, you are welcome, come in, come and have a seat at the table of the Lord, at the feet of Jesus, it's so good to have you with me tonight, I love it when God's people come together and just to worship him and to spend time, come on, we need to spend time with the Lord, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. I just want to tag a few people. I just want to tag a few people because I'm on. Um, okay. That's great. Thanks, Kian. Just want to tag some of my people that wants to watch. Uh, I'm not sure if they can see it on my profile. So, yes, come on, let's just do that, but welcome, we're going to start soon, just prepare your heart, prepare your heart so long, yes, amen, amen, hallelujah, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, we praise you, Jesus, thank you, you're a good God, you are a great God, and we worship you. We worship you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Kian, can you please just uh, also just uh, share this page with my personal profile if you can. Thank you. There's some people that can't see the live. So just bear with us, guys, so we can sort that out. Hallelujah. Just open your heart. The Lord is ready. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. The sound is good. I'm happy that the sound is good. Hallelujah. Share this broadcast with somebody. We're going to pray for the sick. We're going to pray for people's ailments, whether it is a physical ailment or whether it is a spiritual ailment. Come on. Do you know there's many ailments? Hallelujah. Jesus is the great I am. He's the great healer. He's the great provider. He does amazing things. Hallelujah. Come on. Somebody say hallelujah. 
Thank you, Jesus. Yes, we don't have load shedding tonight. God is good. We have his grace and his mercy. I'm just waiting for people to come on. Hallelujah. Before we start, just close your eyes. Forget about what happened today. It doesn't matter what kind of a day you've had. It's over. The day is over. And now you can kick out your shoes. Amen. You can now kick off your shoes, relax, sit back, and enjoy my Father's presence. I feel the Holy Spirit is so tangible tonight. And I know that he's, he's got a plan for tonight. I've had so many attacks leading up to this night. And I know when the attacks is so much, God is in control. Amen. Can somebody say hallelujah? Welcome, Kiara. Thank you for joining the live. Um, it's good to see you on here. Please share this broadcast. Share this broadcast. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We worship you. We give you all the honor and all the praise. Come on, can you give him some praise? All he wants is your worship. He wants your worship. He lives for your worship. He lives in your worship. Amen. So tonight, just forget about your day. Forget about your stress. Forget about all your concerns. Because the master is here. And all your problems will be taken care of. Because when Jesus comes into the room, things must change. Things must change. Amen. Hallelujah. Can you imagine how wonderful it would be? You walk into a room and there's Jesus. Wouldn't that be amazing? Soon we will see him. And we'll be able to sit with him. And all the saints, and they will say, well done, you've completed your race. It's not easy in this time, but God is with us. There's hope. We have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is our best friend. He guides us. He, he keeps us from failing. He pushes us and says, come, my child, don't give up. Hold on. We're almost there. And that is what is so wonderful. You are not alone today. God sees you. He hears your problems. He hears your prayers. He loves it when you pray. And God is so amazing. So I want you to just sit back and enjoy. Enjoy the service. Enjoy his presence. It is time with the Lord. So take all the distractions away. Take all the distractions from your mind. Amen. Take it out. Forget about who upset you today, how much work you have tomorrow, what is wrong with your children and your finances. Come on, somebody say, we need time with Jesus. I want you to write it there in the comment field. Say, Lord, we need time with Jesus. Amen. And in this time, we need him so much. And he is standing by. He's here right now. I wish you could feel him here. I can sense his closeness. And uh, he's going to filter through this, this service. It's going to come to you. Because, you see, God doesn't have special kids. He doesn't have vitbrookies. He loves all his children equally. And he wants to spend time with you. Amen. So how wonderful is that? To know that we have a God that loves us so much. And he cares so much for us. So yes, let's see how many people's online. Please comment in the comment field. Comment in the comment field. If you've just entered into the live so I can say hi to you. You are so welcome. Please come in. You are so welcome. All nations are welcome here. This is not a platform for a church, although it is through the church. You and I are the church. And God is here. He wants to just minister to you. It's not about me. It's not about Pastor Klaus. It's not about who's ministering the word. 
we just ushers and we usher we usher the presence of god to you that's what we are doing tonight so i'm so glad that you are taking the time to come in come sit at the lord's table there's all kinds of things here dished out tonight and it's for you it's for me it's for everybody that's on this line it's for everyone on the on the earth but it depends if you are going to eat tonight so i'm excited to see what the holy spirit's going to do he's going to heal people there's so many people that are sick i myself as you can hear, I've got a bit of a, 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 a flu, but I, the Lord has healed me since last night. I've been was very sick last night, but it's the attack of the enemy because he doesn't like what God is doing, but he's defeated in Jesus' name. We are more than conquerors. He cannot stop us. He cannot uh, keep us from the, the presence of God, from the throne room of God. He cannot keep us from his promises. Every promise is yes and amen. Come on. Are you excited? I am excited because there's power in God. God is powerful. He created the universe. He created you. You are so significantly made. There's no one who looks like you, that smells like you. Hallelujah. No one can do what you can do. Isn't that fantastic? So, yes, come. Share this broadcast with somebody who's sick. Share this broadcast with somebody who needs Jesus. Someone who might be suicidal. Someone who is depressed. Someone who doesn't know what to do. Sometimes we need direction. Sometimes we feel hopeless. Come on. Come on. Do you feel hopeless tonight? I have hope for you. His name is Jesus. And he's the bride guru that pursues the bride. And he will not stop pursuing you. How wonderful is that? So yes, come. Come. Share the broadcast. You, there's a lot of people that need prayer. Just share it with somebody who needs a prayer from the Lord, who needs a touch. And we're going to start in a few more minutes. I just want to give time for people to share and get people to come so that they can hear the word that I have. And the Lord has been trying to get me to deliver this word since last week. But we had load shedding. And the enemy uses stuff like that sometimes to stop the work of the Lord. But we are unstoppable. And here we are tonight. Tonight the Lord will speak to us. And I know that your life will change. Hallelujah. Because God's word is powerful. Amen. So share it quickly. We're going to start in a few moments. While, while you are busy sharing, let's close our eyes for a moment. Let's just worship the Lord. I want you to close your eyes there where you are right now and get a picture of Jesus. Just be still for a moment. Let the noise of this world just stop around you. Don't allow anything to distract you at this moment. If you're in your bedroom, close the door. If you are with your family, invite them to do the same. It's wonderful for families to pray together and be in the presence of God together. It's a miracle. For me, it's a miracle when people worship God together. Your loved ones. Amen. So close your eyes. Clear your mind. Get a picture of Jesus in your mind. Just take a deep breath and allow the Holy Spirit to just enter in, into your, into your being, not into your lungs. You breathe the whole day, but your spirit man needs a fresh breath. So as you take a deep breath, just listen to the beautiful music and let the peace of God just flood your soul. You need rest. You need rest. You need refreshment. You're tired. It's been a hard road. Your shoes might be broken. Come on, somebody. Your shoes might be broken. Your heart may be broken. 
Yes, thank you, Lord. Just touch your people where they are right now. Come, Holy Spirit. We cannot do this without your Holy Spirit. We cannot preach the word without your spirit. For the spirit is the revelation of the word. Amen. It's a light in the darkness. Jesus brings light. He is the word. Come on. Are you ready for a word from the Lord? I love the word. The word is powerful. It's a two-edged sword. It slashes to the left and it slashes to the right and it destroys. It destroys. It's a flame of fire. Tonight we need the fire of God in our lives. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. Thank you for joining me. I'm going to start. I don't want us to stay too late because we have lives as well, but we need to take time with the Lord. And these sessions are the best times to just sit at Jesus' feet and receive from him. That's where you get your strength to keep you another length of the week. Amen. With Sunday, you come together again and it refreshes you again. I spoke to Pastor Klaus, as you guys know, last weekend, he and Amanda got married. A new covenant was born, praise God. We're so excited for them. And we congratulate them as our family, as our pastor. And we just say, Lord, bless this covenant. Because God loves covenant. It's unbreakable. Hallelujah. So they're on honeymoon. They're going, they actually going away to Nays now this week. He said to me before the service, I must please tell you guys that he loves you and you must enjoy the service and keep on supporting the services. He sends all his love and Amanda as well. They send their love. They miss you. But this is important time for them. So I'm here to fill in for them. And I know that the Lord is also going to heal me just as he's going to heal you. Because I receive first and then I give to you. Hallelujah. So that's amazing. Don't you think God is too awesome? So tonight I want us to pray. I'm going to start open the service with a prayer. And then I want to share with you what the Lord gave me. Are you happy? Are you glad to be here? Quickly go to the comments and say, Amen. Come, I need you to preach with me tonight. I need you to help me. I'm also weak tonight, but in him I feel so strong. I feel like a lion tonight. My God is so strong. So I apologize if I have to wipe my nose now and again. Because I have a bit of a flu. But it's okay. I still can do this by his grace. Amen. So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for each and every person that is on this live stream right now. Lord, thank you for the opportunity to be able to come together as the body of Christ and to spend time in your presence. Lord, we need your presence. We need you so much. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you take over this service everything that comes against this service right now i bind i break and i cut it loose in jesus mighty name no interference nothing just the blood of jesus and the presence of god thank you lord that lives will be changed not because of me or any other person but because of the holy spirit because of Jesus Christ, the Son, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, and God the Father, Yeshua, Yahweh, our God. Thank you, Lord, that we humble ourselves, we open our hearts, we prepare our hearts to receive what you have for us tonight. And thank you, Lord, that healing will come, testimonies will come, breakthroughs will come. Not because we deserve it, but because that is who you are. Thank you, Lord, for it. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Welcome, Haley. Haley Moster, thank you for joining us.
Who else did I miss? If you've joined the stream, just drop your name in the comment box. I just want to greet a few people before we start because it's manners. Hallelujah. And we always have to welcome family. Amen. Anyway, let's continue. I want to share a word with you. And this word, the Lord has been speaking to me for a while regarding this specific man in the Bible. I got this verse and I said, Lord, what do you want to say? But before I got that verse, I was just sitting in the lounge and all my thoughts just wandered. And the Lord dropped a word in my spirit. You see, sometimes it's just a word that we need. And then, then God comes and he gives us a revelation. And he starts breaking open the word and the revelation of what he's trying to tell you. So I was sitting and this word dropped in my spirit. And I was like, that's very interesting. And I said, Lord, show me what you want to teach me because he's the greatest teacher he's the one that can teach us the truth the way and the life so we must always be obedient to his voice amen his teachings there's a lot of people teaching a lot of things it's not always the truth pray that god will give you discernment because there's a lot of fake news and fake truths that's been preached and I said to the Lord, Lord, I don't want to be like that. I come from a place where I was misguided by a lie. And I have the girdle of truth on my loins every day. How can I not walk in the truth of God? Reveal yourself to me, Lord. Reveal the truth to me. And that's what you should be praying every day, is that Jesus will reveal the truth because he is the truth. Amen. And the Lord dropped this wonderful word in my spirit. And I thought, this is strange. It's a word that I haven't heard in a very, very long time. And the word that he dropped in my spirit is a leper. You heard me. Leper. A leper is a person who's sick. And we're going to talk about this leper tonight. And God is going to bring not just a physical healing in your body. I believe God is going to bring a spiritual healing, emotional, on every level that you can think of. And he's going to show you how to get rid of the things that you're battling with. Amen. Isn't he good? He's so good. So let's jump into it. If you've got your Bible, I want you to go with me and read in Matthew 5. I mean, Matthew 8. Matthew 8 verse 1. And it's about Jesus that heals a man. Listen to this. And when Jesus came down from the hill, large crowds was following him. Then a man suffering from a dreaded disease came to him. He knelt down before him and said, Sir, if you want to, you can make me clean. And Jesus stretched out his hand and he touched him. I do want to, he answered. And I can imagine he did it with a big smile. And he said, Be clean. Be clean. At once the man was healed of this disease. In an instant. Jesus wants to heal us in a moment. He wants to do it right away. He's waiting for an opportunity to heal us. Isn't that wonderful? I love this piece. I love it so much. You know, it's so precious, this word. So I want to break this down and I want to tell you how the Lord connected the dots for me. And I'm sure it's going to bless you. So, you know, leprosy was the dreaded disease that this man had. It was the most dreaded disease of ancient worlds. It was dreaded, dreaded, dreaded. 
Nothing struck more fear of dread and revulsion like a leper. Can you imagine? A leper was always called a walking dead man. That's terrible. A walking dead man. He smelled of decaying flesh, rotting flesh. He had to announce himself that he was unclean. How degrading if you have to tell people that your flesh is rotting and you have to declare it. That is so degrading. Amen. And it even would have caused him to lose his toes. It would have caused him to lose his fingers because it was a rotting flesh and the toes and the fingers are the, are the points that gets the least circulation because that's what leprosy did. It stopped the circulation in the body. Okay, so the oxygen didn't get through the blood to all the parts of the body. Amen. So he would shuffle toeless, screaming. Can you imagine this man walking in the town of Jerusalem and he's crying out, saying, unclean, unclean. And people would throw him with vegetables and they would shout him and they would say, we don't want you here, leave, go out, get away from us. It's terrible. And I think today we've had a glimpse of it. Before we had COVID, we, we still had HIV and AIDS. And there's a lot of people that are being shunned like that, like they are lepers. Amen. You are unclean. Don't come near me. I might get what you are going to going to have. I don't want to get what you have. Look at you. Amen. How terrible. And he would have been half blind because it also affects your eyes. So this was a toeless, shuffling, dirty person smelling of decaying flesh, rotting flesh, screaming in the streets, unclean, unclean. It's degrading to a person, especially in society. It's terrible. And leprosy begins with a general pain that is followed by a numbness in a certain area of your body. And in that certain area, they would become sores, okay? like spots, but they would discolor eventually. And they lose their original color. Can you imagine? So this guy is not just stinking, but he's turning into this monster. He's turning into this scaly monster that reeks and looks horrible. Thick, glossy scales became his skin because of the circulation and of the, the, the source. The source became infectious and it was really just festering and that was the smell that people smelt. Eyes and ears became nubby. In other words, the eyes would swell up close, the eyes would, the ears would be like cauliflower ears, and they would have this, this deformity in their face. Can you imagine? That's terrible. Fingers and toes, there were none. So they had these stubs of feet, and the, the fingers were gone to the bone, to the hand. Amen? Sure, it's terrible. And his throat eventually became very hoarse because it even affected his throat. And it became raspy, you know. And now you didn't even just see that he was a leper, but now you could hear that he was a leper and you could smell that he was a leper. So there was no way out of this horrible 
problem, this horrible disease. Amen. And my heart broke when I read this, when I did the research on what leprosy is. And leprosy you only heard from in the Bible. And technology those days weren't that advanced. Today, leprosy can be cured. It's still in the world, but it's under control because God gave us wisdom. And I believe that it was only for a season. Coronavirus is only for a season. It came to test the bones of people. And now that you are here, you've survived, and God deserves the glory for removing this curse from us. And I believe that God is going to turn this country and the world around, and he's going to heal the world. That's his plan. Amen. So this man was walking, and the odor was such a stench. They say this leper was so rotting of flesh that you could actually taste the stench in your mouth when you were near him. Their families really just reject them out of the town. They weren't allowed to be even with their families, but they were rejected because of the taste and the smell that they left. And I tell you, I wonder sometimes, what kind of a taste do we leave in people's mouths? Are you leaving a sweet aroma around people in your life? Or is it the stench of the world, of sickness, decay, rotting flesh? Amen. So, leprosy is a vivid picture of spirit defilement of sin. It's a defiling sight. And I believe that spiritual leprosy is even worse than physical leprosy. When we have sin in our lives, it creates a defilement. The word of God says that God is holy, so we should be holy. And we must have holy lives. I don't think we look good, we sound good, and we smell good if we have sin in our lives. Amen? And it separates us from God. Sin separates us from God. And I believe that is why these lepers were separated from people, from society, because they were full of sin and decay. I believe that no one is without sin, but we have to try to live holy lives. For God is holy. He wants us to be holy. He forgives us our sins every single day if we repent. Amen. I see Pastor Klaus is on. Welcome, Pastor Klaus. Thank you for joining, taking the time. God bless you. And... Uh, Yes, come check, I'm doing the job right. <laughs> Just joking. But let's talk about this further. So if we read in Leviticus 13 verse 3, the word of God says that sins is deeper than the skin. That's how I know that is associated with leprosy. Amen. And it also says in verses 8, that it spreads all over the body. Sin spreads. If somebody is doing sin in their lives, it's so easy for someone else to be influenced by a sinner. If somebody is drinking, if somebody is sleeping around, it's a sin. God wants us to be holy. And if that person do it, it's just satisfying the flesh. That's what sin is, satisfying the flesh. So if a person is satisfying the flesh, you want to do it too. Have you noticed? It's easier to say yes than no. 
Sure. So we get influenced and it defiles us. It spreads. Sin spreads. Corruption in South Africa spreads because there's no control. Amen. Sin in the world spreads because there's no control. Personally, I think the church is asleep. Come on. The church must be out there preaching the gospel, taking control of this earth. It's our authority. It is our, this is our world. We have authority over this planet. Not the sinners, no. Not the devil and his cohorts, not sin, no. God created the earth for his children. Amen? Come on, somebody. Are you in walking in your authority today? It's time that you walk in your authority. Nothing can stop the children of God. Amen? So, if we read Leviticus 13, verse 45 to 46, you can go read this whole piece. It's going to bless you. That piece talks about it defiles and isolates a person. It isolates a person. Sin. Amen? And that's what leprosy did. It isolated people. It isolated them. And it defiled them. Amen? Even the, the, the clothes that they wore, it went into their clothes. And leprous garments are only fit for the fire, guys. They can't do anything with garments that are defiled. It's only good for fire. And let me tell you, the Holy Spirit is fire. So maybe you just need to get those clothes off you tonight. Amen? Maybe you need some fire. I need fire. I love the fire of God. My ministry is fire revival movement. I want to move God's fire all across the land. I want to start a bonfire. Come on. Snakes don't like fire. Sin don't like fire. The firemen don't like fire. Satan don't like the fire. But that's his place. He's going to hell and there's fire. It's not for God's children. It's for demons. It's for the devil. Hallelujah. Praise God. He saved us from death, hell and the grave. Praise God. So Leviticus 13, verse 52 to 57 says, so, so those who are clothed in sin will burn forever. And that is, that is a scripture that confirms that we will end up in hell if we do not repent of sin. And then what happens then? It sounds very grave. It sounds hopeless. It sounds like... We're all going to die in fire, in hell. But that's not the truth. I have hope for you today. There's hope for all of us. Jesus is his name. And Mark 1 verse 40 to 45 speaks of that. When he touched that leper, he touched the untouchable. Come on. He was the first person in front of Everybody in public, the whole community saw what he did. He touched the untouchable. And he healed a man completely. But there were conditions. There were conditions. Because you see, God is a God of order. And there has to be a process in the cleansing. Come on. Say it in the comments. I have to be cleansed in the process. There's a process of cleansing. Come on. Say, Lord, cleanse me in the process. It's not nice. It's not nice. But it is going to change lives. It changes your life. Amen. So, when Jesus touched this man, immediately the leprosy left him. Immediately, it, well, it, it felt much better. But the conditions were still there. The conditions 
still there. Sometimes we've had a touch from God, but the conditions is still there. Hi, Henri, thank you for joining. God bless you. Sometimes we have a touch from the Lord. We can be in the presence of God and walk away with conditions in our lives that doesn't change. And then God says, but come, it's time for a process of cleansing. It's time for a process of restoration. It is time that I bring your world in order. And the old self must die and the new must come. So God has a process. And listen how amazing this is. When he was cured, I want to read you this part in Mark 1. Let's read it. Let me just go there. I want to read this to you. Tell me when you're ready. Hallelujah. God's going to do something. Amen. So, Mark 1, verse 43 to 44, in the NIV says the following. He says, Jesus sent him with a strong warning. See that you don't tell anyone. But go, show yourself to the priest. And offer the sacrifice that Moses commanded for your cleansing as a testimony to them. So this is what needs to happen. This is the process. So Jesus didn't just come to heal. He came to give us a process. And we need to follow that process in order for us to be clean. Amen. To be holy before the Lord. And Jesus said to him with a strong warning. So he didn't say it. Oh, you know, you can do this if you want to. He said, listen, listen. See that you don't tell anyone. Okay? You can't tell the secret to anyone. You can't tell the secret to anyone. Why did Jesus do that? I asked that question. I was like, Lord, why? This is important. Why did you say that? Because obviously this man was so excited that he got healed. Imagine you went through this and God just blessed you. You want to scream it at the top of your lungs how God touched your life. Isn't that what we do? We jump on Facebook. We jump on social media and we say, the Lord is so good. He blessed me. He brought a breakthrough. But Jesus says, no, we shouldn't do that. Why? And I think that's just my side. But I feel a strong sense of revelation that God didn't want us to say certain things to people. It's like with prophetic word. When somebody gives you a prophetic word, they might not like it because jealousy and envy is there. They also want this breakthrough. And they might be praying for years for this breakthrough. And now you get this breakthrough. Amen? And now that person is like, that that. that person got that and that. And it's not the right spirit, guys. And it creates things in the atmosphere. And suddenly you are on attack and you lose your blessing. Why? That breakthrough didn't come anymore. Or it came, but not in the full capacity. Why? Because in the spiritual realm, there's a lot of people, or let me not say people, there's a lot of spirits that's listening. The devil is listening. And some things God wants to be between you and him. Not everybody's going to celebrate your breakthrough. Not everybody is going to celebrate your life and your ministry. No one's going to do that. Except your true friends. So be careful. It's a warning from Jesus. He says, don't just talk. We talk too quickly. Some things you need to leave with God. 
Some things you don't need to tell others. You don't need to tell your wife. You don't need to tell your husband. God will forgive you because it's personal. It's intimate with him. You don't tell certain things about your wife to others. You don't talk certain things about your husband to others. Those are secrets between you and him or you or her. That's it. Some things is between you and the Lord. And if you don't obey and you let these things out prematurely, there's other things that can influence it. So that's why Jesus gave a stern warning. Don't tell anybody. Remember, Jesus was the prophet. He knew he's going to the cross. I believe that. His word continuously tell us that he's about his father's business. And that was the cross. That was all that he came to do was the cross. Clearly. So he didn't want people to know. Because if they stop Jesus from going to the cross, we would be doomed today. Come on. Come on. Say amen. Sometimes our lips is the problem. Sure. Sometimes we talk too quick. We need to sometimes zip it. <laughs> sometimes we need to just be quiet. I know you're excited when you get breakthroughs, but don't share them. Don't share prophetic words with people. It's for you. It's not for them. God will speak to them in their own capacity. He's got a relationship with each and every one of us. If you allow it, he can do what he's doing for me, he can do for you. I'm no one special. Well, I am, but so are you. So that was the warning. And he says, see that you don't tell anyone, but go show yourselves to the priest. Today, Jesus is our priest. Amen. Can you say amen? Say in the comments, Jesus is my priest. He's your priest this, he, today. In this modern world, he's our priest. And look how beautiful this works out. And in, it's in Leviticus 14, verse 4 to 18. The process is explained according to the law of Moses. You see, the Old Testament and the New Testament cannot be separated. It works hand in hand. The one flows from the one to the other. It is a continuation. The Old Testament speaks of the cross. It speaks of God's salvation plan. And then Jesus comes and he just completes the story. It's one big story. It's not two different books. It is not two different testaments. It is the same thing. It all points to Jesus. Amen. So, what is this process? The process is to take two birds. This is the process. Take two birds, cedar wood, scarlet, and hyssop, says the word. And one bird had to be killed. Okay? And it had to be in an earthen vessel. Okay? And... It had to be slaughtered over water. Hallelujah. Now the two birds are significant. This is all prophetic. It's a prophetic action. And our lives should be a prophetic walk. I believe that. Everything we do has an effect in the spiritual realm. So everything you do, everything you say, is going to affect your future and your now. Amen. So he took this priest, took this one bird, slaughtered it for the blood, and he would have put it in an earthen vessel. An earthen vessel is a vessel. It's a vase, a vase, not a fancy vase, a normal vase that you carry water in. And it had to be killed in this vase, so the blood fell in the vase, and it was done over water, signifying purification, okay? So, the other bird 
was not slaughtered. No. It would have been dipped in the blood of the dead bird. Okay, so that bird was taken, dipped in the blood, and it would have been sprinkled, and it would have been tied up with the other ingredients, the cedar wood, the hyssop, and the scarlet. Okay, so there was a process. This bird was dead, the blood was dipped by the other bird, it was dipped in that blood, and those cleaning materials was used as a purification rite, okay? And the priest would then sprinkle the blood seven times over this leper, okay, seven times, and would then be pronounced clean. Remember, in his old life, before Jesus, he had to pronounce, I'm unclean, I'm unclean. And now the priest comes and he says, I sprinkled you with the blood seven times, and now you are clean. Can you imagine the celebration, the joy of being clean finally? And this never happened before Jesus didn't arrive. People died as lepers, guys. They never got to the priest the priest was never available to them because the priest was the most holy person he's the only one who were able to go into the inner court of the ark to go into the presence of God hallelujah he would never ever reach a leper before Jesus they died outside the city they burned their bodies Praise God. And Jesus came, he changed all of that. And then the priest would give him instructions after this rite and this process. He had to go wash his clothes, his fisted clothes he needed to go and wash. And he had to shave all his hair off and wash himself in water. Amen. And after this, he must come to his camp, and he had to sit outside his tent for seven days. And this is so significant, because when the priest sprinkled the blood over him, it's the blood of Jesus. The two birds represent the leper's life before Christ, and the leper's life after Christ. Isn't that wonderful? And that's the perfect picture of the cross of Jesus Christ. What he did in Calvary, it's the gospel, it's love. It is, oh, I feel the Holy Spirit is so over me because I'm preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I'm telling you the good news is that you don't need to die a leper, but it's the cross that cleanses and purifies our lives. It's wonderful. And his clothes had to be washed. And I believe that Jesus gave him a new cloak, a new garment. The old garments are never the same. You know, the cedar, that cedar that that bird was tied up with, represent the wood of the cross. For the word of God says that any person that has sin, must put his sin on the cross. That the person is cursed, hanging on a cross. That's Jesus. Jesus came and he prophetically announced the cross before he even reached the cross. Hallelujah. Everything in the word of God points to the cross and to the gospel. And then he had to shave his head. Why did he have to shave his head? It's not because there's something in his hair. No. It showed an act of obedience. Because obedience is better than sacrifice. And when you've met Jesus, you need to change. You do not remain the same. 
So there's certain changes that need to come into your life, my friend. You can no longer hang out with the same people. Come on. Your friends, you need to cut them off and cut them loose. There's certain people that you need to let go because they're no longer part of your life. They're no longer on your level. They're not the same as you. Hallelujah. There's certain things you need to change in your life. And shaving your hair, it's radical. It's radical. I've shaven my head a few times. For me, it was easy because to me, it was nothing. You know, tradition says a woman shouldn't shave her head. And I got so traumatized with people telling me, yeah, you, you cannot preach if your hair is short and if it's shaved. I laugh at them because you know what? God has given me this position. I'm not appointed by myself. God did it. He doesn't care the way I wear my hair. We have a covenant. My heart is all he sees. When Jesus looks at me, he sees the blood. He doesn't see any fault with me. I'm perfect in his eyes. Hallelujah. You are perfect in God's eyes. He doesn't see a skewed nose or a crooked, crooked ear or a crooked eye or acne or baldness. Come on. Or thin or fatness. He loves us just the way we are and accepts us that way because he sees the blood. It's all that he sees is the blood. God sees the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. So that's the seed of is the cross. The scarlet. Oh, the scarlet. The scarlet rope. In Jericho, there was a crew of spies that was sent out. To go and look at the at the land, and the enemy was on their foot, and a woman with a scarlet cord led them into her home in the wall, a hole in the wall, and they got saved. She hid them. That scarlet cord is the same; was made of the same scarlet. It's a plant that grows in the Middle East. And this scarlet robe is so amazing. That scarlet robe was the same robe or rope or scarlet material that was used when Jesus died, just before he died. When the Roman soldiers took off his clothes, his clothes was ripped off him. He changed. Those old clothes were ripped off from him. And they put the scarlet robe on him. They mocked him, but they didn't understand that God is still in control. And that golden robe signified the blood, the salvation of his death. Everything that Jesus did and everything that happened to him from Gethsemane, from the day he was born, before the earth was even formed, Genesis 1 verse 1, Jesus was there. He was heading for the cross, and it was prophetic. Amen? How wonderful is that? Oh, I love the word of God. And I want to read to you 2 Corinthians 7 verse 1. It says that we cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and the spirit, reflecting holiness and the fear of God. And that's what we need to do. And that's where we need to get. And by this process, that's how we're going to get there. And the same ele elements signifies the death of Jesus. That signifies the gospel, the cross. The scarlet robe is in Matthew 27, verse 27 to 28, where they clothed Jesus with that scarlet robe. And then the hyssop is the cleansing. It's a cleansing agent that was used in ancient times to clean homes. The same hyssop was used in the time of Moses, where they slaughtered the lamb and they put hyssop in the blood. And they applied the blood 
on their doorposts when death was coming to Egypt. And it saved the Hebrews. It's the same hyssop. It's the same cleansing power of God that saves God's people. And you can read that also in John 19, verse 28 to 29. There they gave Jesus sour wine, which is vinegar. The water and the blood came out of his side. And the blood of the dove and over the water is what signifies that process. So we need to be washed by the blood and be purified by the water. Now the water represents the word. The word washes us. Amen. The word washes us. In John 7 verse 38, living water will flow from his heart, says the word. Living water is what we need. And living water flowed from his sides. Amen. And that's so amazing. The two birds not only represent his previous life and his current life, but it also signifies the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit confirming that Jesus Christ is his son. Because when Jesus was baptized by John in the Jordan River, the heavens opened up and God's voice said loudly, this is my son, the one, the only, my beloved. Isn't that wonderful? All through the word we can see the plan of God, the gospel in working and this is the story that i want to share with you this is the the ultimate process i want you to know about because now that you know about it you're more, most more wiser hallelujah say i am wiser and you know what to do if you have sin in your life you need to get rid of it and Tonight is a perfect time for that. Even if you gave your heart to God before, and maybe you've flowed away from Him, maybe circumstances kept you from Him, maybe sin, maybe not. Maybe it's just a broken heart, a broken spirit. Maybe you just got tired. Tonight is your chance to reconnect with the one, with the perfect plan for your life. The cross is for you. The cleansing power of God is here. But the priest also represents our cleansing. It represents repentance. It represents reformation. That's what it ultimately shows us. Excuse me. So, I apologize. So, we need to repent of our sin. I do it every day. I try to live my life as holy as possible. But we're only human. Maybe today you got angry. Maybe today you said something to somebody to hurt them. Maybe you did something that disappointed God. It opened the door for sin in your life. Maybe you've been sinning for a very long time and not obeying the word of God. The Ten Commandments still is relevant today, guys. God's word doesn't change. It's still the same. Yesterday, today, forever. And people want to sidestep sin. You cannot. It will cause death. Pastor Fricky, my spiritual dad, he always says, he's got very wise words, he always says, you know, you can live like you want to, but you cannot die like you want to. There's conditions. So tonight, I want to I wanna ask you to close your eyes, and I'm not going to ask you to do anything, but just speak to the Lord. It's you and him tonight. 
your life might be falling apart. Everything seems to be in shambles. Maybe you're so sick and you don't get better. Maybe you visit the doctors and the doctors only got bad news for you. Or a solution is just not found. I'm telling you, my friend, tonight is your night. But the Lord said to me, they repent their sins. They accept me in their hearts. I will come with the water, with the blood, and I will wash them and I'll bring breakthrough and I will change their lives. So if that's you, even if it's not, you know, I always want to make sure that my life is right with Jesus, with God. I want to be with him one day. <coughs> Excuse me. I want to be with him. I don't want to lose out. I don't want to be in other places. I want to live in his joy, in his peace. And I want you to come with me. The love of God, there's nothing like it. So tonight, I'm going to give you an invitation. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to take a moment, and I want you to look at your life, every part, your relationships, your health, your finances, whatever there is. And I want you to look at your life. And the word of God is like a mirror. Pastor Bert always says that. It reflects your life to yourself. And measure yourself tonight with this word. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will remove the scales from your eyes, remove the plugs from your ears, because the devil wants to deceive us. And I cover you with the precious blood of Jesus. And I ask the Holy Spirit to especially come and touch you, touch you, and show you and reveal to you. Holy Spirit, reveal to your people tonight the things that is not in order. Because we cannot continue the way we are continuing. You have so much better for us. We want to choose that. So Lord, I thank you that you start working in people's hearts. Maybe there's unforgiveness. Guys, unforgiveness will kill you. It's not for the other person's sake that we forgive. No, 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 no. We forgive because you need to be free. You put yourself in a cage if you don't forgive that other party. Do what is right with the Lord and he will do the rest. Our fight is not in flesh. It's not with your brother, your sister. No. They might be wrong, but your fight is not with them. Your fight is not your fight. It's God's fight. He will sort that person out. But keep your side right with God. And he will change your life. So as we sit here in this wonderful presence, the Holy Spirit is so tangible here in my room. Oh Lord, thank you Jesus. I want you to close your eyes. And I want you to pray. If this is you, I want you to be sincere. Really mean mean repentance. Repentance is not something I do to please people. Don't do it for me. I can't help you. Do it for Jesus. He's the one. He knows your heart. If you're not really repenting, there'll be no change. But if you repent tonight and you say, Lord, whatever it is, whatever sins in my life, Lord, even if there is no sin, Lord, just look at my heart Examine my heart. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. I need to know if I'm in line with you, if I'm right with you. Because I want to bring a change and I want to influence this world with your glory. If that's you tonight, I want you to just close your eyes. And just say, Lord, I need you. I repent, Lord, and we're going to pray, and I want you to pray after me. As you are in your room, whether you are in the living room, in your car, I hope you're not driving while watching, but wherever you are, and you hear my voice, close your eyes and pray this prayer. 
and really mean it. And I promise you, God will turn it around. Amen. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that I repent of my sin. Lord, I know that I am a sinner. I was born in sin. But Lord, I thank you for the cross. Jesus came to wash my sin away. The blood of Jesus washes me. But Lord, I have to repent of my sin. I have to say it with my mouth. And then you will really forgive me. So Lord, I repent of my sins. Lord, forgive me if I've done anything to offend you. Not people, but you. If I've done anything against your word, please forgive me. Set me free. Wash me in your blood. Forgive me. Give me a clean robe so that I can be free indeed. So that your plan for my life will come forth. Father, I accept the power of the cross in my life. I accept the gift of eternal life. I accept that Jesus Christ died on the cross. And three days later, he got out of that grave. And the empty grave is still there as a testimony that he is on the right hand of the Father. And he was ruling over me and my life. And this earth and this universe, he is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And he's the lover of my soul. And I give my life and my heart to him. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, that now restoration can happen, reformation can happen, and my breakthroughs are coming. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Teach me your ways. Give me a hunger for your word. Let me eat your word. It's fresh bread from heaven. And let me drink the fresh water of the word. Teach me to have a contrite, humble spirit, always obeying the Lord. And thank you, Lord, that you teach me your ways. I pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Did you pray this prayer? Do you feel the Holy Spirit? Comment there if you want to. I don't want to put you on a spot. Or make you feel that you have to say anything. But I want to celebrate with you. God is so good. We love him so much. And now God can start healing. Amen. So now what I want us to do. Is if there's any people watching. I want you to put in the comments if you have a prayer request. If there's a sickness in your body if there is a lack if you have a a need put it in the comments and we'll pray for you i will pray for you and i'll strengthen my faith with your faith and the lord will do miracles amen so please comment if there's no comments then i assume that everybody's okay and that there's no need and that God has already done the work. Um, but if there is still a hunger in your heart for a prayer, I'm here to serve you. So let's give a moment. Let's see if there's any comments. Kian, I'm not sure if I see all the comments. If I'm missing something, please just uh, share it again in the comments. Or just type for me so I can see it on my side. But hallelujah. Just close your eyes. And let the Holy Spirit touch you there where you are. Just take a deep breath in. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we receive your healing. We receive your healing, Lord. We receive your blood. We receive your power. For the word says, Lord... That when your spirit comes upon us, we will receive power. Come baptize us, Lord, with the Holy Spirit. Come live inside of me, Holy Spirit. Let me 
be on fire for you. Let my life represent your kingdom. Not a person or a society circle, but let me represent your spirit, your kingdom, your love. Come, Holy Spirit, just touch us. Just touch us, Lord. Whatever you need is, come on. Connect with the Holy Spirit right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Just move from person to person right now. Just flood their rooms. Just touch them, Lord. Give them strength. Give them hope. You are the future. Do what no man can do. Just do it, Lord. Come, we invite you. We invite you in, in our spirit. In the name of Jesus, Lord. Just come. Come, Holy Spirit. You are welcome in this place. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Just fill my spirit right now. Come heal my body. From the top of my head, flowing through my veins, through my muscles, through my arteries, Lord, Father, through my DNA, let me become one with you. Send your healing power through every part of my being. Heal my emotions, heal my thoughts, heal my broken heart right now. Come restore me to my original plan. Thank you, Lord, that you flood my heart with your love, your unconditional love right now. Thank you, Jesus, for what you have done tonight. I will live and not die. For you are my rock. And you are my shelter. You are my protection. You are my sword and you are my shield. And I am safe in your pavilion. I thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is everybody happy? Did you receive from the Lord? Please let me know if there's any prayer requests as the last call. If you are happy, then I am happy. And I love you so much. God loves you so, so very much. You are so special to him. Thank you for joining me tonight. Next week we'll be back. Same place, same time. Make sure that you invite somebody to come and listen. I'm sure the Lord is going to give me another wonderful word. We're going to pray for you. We're going to love on you. I just spent some awesome time in His presence. I pray that you'll have a blessed week. Until we meet again, remember Sunday service, Rechurch. Kian will put the details in the comments. The service time, I think it's 10 o'clock. And it's going to be powerful. It's a church on fire for God and a passionate people's church. It's not about a building. It's about you. God bless you. And we'll talk soon. Stay under the blood and stay safe. Until we meet next week again, this is me saying goodnight. And I love you so much. See you next time. Bye-bye.